In this segment, we're going to cover the topic of equities. Equities is the financial term for stocks. Now, if you want to sound like you're financially literate and you're college educated, then don't talk about the stock market. Talk about the equities market. Now, in 2020, the equities market is in the tank. But equities market has been fluctuating. So you can say, ah, the equities are up, equities are down. But it's good to use the word equities in terms of when we talk about stocks. That's because stocks are ownership in the business. Remember, ownership in the business shows up under equities on the balance sheet. And so we refer to stocks as equities. Now there's two types of stock. The stock you hear about the most is common stock. This is ownership in the business. And you'll see in the chart here that it says it's a claim on income. In other words, you're an owner. You're entitled to the profits of the business. You're also entitled to the assets. You own the business. Now, stockholders may or may not receive dividends. We're going to get into that probably at the end of the semester when we talk about dividend policies. But simply, a company pays dividends if it doesn't have a better use for the money. If it can use those profits and reinvest and grow, then it probably won't pay dividends. We should maybe talk a minute on that. So think about a stock that doesn't pay dividends. You expect that company to grow, like Amazon. Therefore, you're going to get the value out of that investment, out of the growth of the stock, the stock price. A company like a utility, electric company or a water company, will pay dividends. Not a lot of people are adding water or electricity. So you're going to get your returns out of that from dividends, plus maybe some out of uh, the growth of the stock price, the capital gains. Now, as a corporation that issues stock, owners have limited liability. You can't be sued for the actions of the company as an owner individually. Common stockholders have a say in management. They vote for the board of directors. The board of directors represents the owners by law. They have a responsibility to represent the owners in the management of the business. The board of directors will approve things like mergers and acquisitions, dividend payouts, and other major strategic directions of the company. Proxy is when you as a common stockholder, you have the right to vote, but you may give your proxy, your substitute in terms of right to vote to someone uh, on the board of directors to vote on your behalf. You don't have to. Uh, I've attended the Green Bay Packers shareholder meetings and I get to vote in person sitting there at Lambeau Field. The thing about common stock is when they're issued on the primary market and investment bankers purchase them, the money goes in, shows up on the balance sheet, the cash goes on the balance sheet as well, and that money never gets paid back. There's no maturity to those stocks. Once the company has it, they have no obligation whatsoever to pay that money back. Unlike bonds, when we talked about it, they have a maturity date. They borrow the money, they get the cash, but they have to pay it back. So there's a big difference relative to bonds. Bonds are, um, they don't have a claim on income. Well, they have first claim on income, but it's limited to interest payments. They have the claim on assets if the company goes bankrupt, first claim on bank uh, in bankruptcy. Bondholders are, you have to pay your debts, and bondholders are the debt debt holders, and so they have to be paid first. Dividends, they don't pay dividends with bonds. There's interest, and the interest is required. Right? Now, there is no say in the management of the business with the bondholders. They simply hold the IOU, and that's it. And as I said, bonds do have a maturity. We talked about that. Now, Preferred stock is the other kind of stock. It's kind of a half a bond and half a stock. 
preferred stock pays required dividends. Often will be listed as a percent of the par value of the preferred stock. Stocks, preferred stock is sold as a par value. And or just could be a fixed amount of dividends. Preferred stockholders receive their dividends before common stockholders. And preferred stockholders come in line before common stockholders if the company should happen to go bankrupt. So preferred stock is kind of preferred in that they get their money before the common stockholders. And again, there's no maturity date. Typically, preferred stockholders do not get to have a say in the running of the business, no say in management. But they get their, their dividends before the common stockholders get their dividends. And they're required to get their dividends before the common stockholders. There's no maturity. So if you think about common stock, it's really a kind of a cross between bonds and common stock. Preferred stockholders get guaranteed, in quotes, payments. But unlike bonds, there's no maturity. Now, I talk about here bonds, preferred stock is often convertible. That means if you have convertible preferred stock, it means you can, under certain conditions, exchange it for common stock. That gives you more options as an investor. Preferred stock may also be retired or called. What that means is the company can buy back the preferred stock. Why would they do that? Well, let's suppose they issued preferred stock at 5% dividend payout. And now they can borrow money at 3%. Well, why would I pay 5% when I pay 3%? So they would pay back the preferred stockholders, and maybe sell bonds or preferred stock at the lower interest rates. So that's why they would retire or call the stock. Preferred stock is a perpetuity. We talked about that briefly when we talked about annuities. It's an annuity that goes on forever. So the value of a preferred stock is very easy to calculate. It's simply the dividend divided by your required rate of return just like any other annuity, which is a perpetuity. Common stock, this is a little bit more difficult in terms of the valuation. There's two things to know in, in calculating what the common stock value might be. One is you want to know the growth factor. You want to know how the company is growing. To calculate the growth factor, we can use the equation return on equity times the profit retention rate. Let me tell you what that means. Return on equity is the profit that the owners make on their investment. Okay, 10% say. The profit retention rate is the percent of that profit that is kept. In other words, not paid out in dividends. So if I make a return on equity, my profit this year, let's say for simple reason, simple calculations is 10%, and I keep 80% of it, will that be 10% times 80%? Oh, did I? I hope I said 80%. 80% would be 8%. So I expect the company to grow at 8%. Let me try that again. A simple way to think about this is what percent of the profits, the profit making is being kept by the company. So if the company makes a 10% profit return on equity, how much of that does it keep? What, what percent of that profit does it keep and plow back into the business? If it keeps all of it, then you'd expect the growth rate to be 10%. If it keeps half of it and pays the other half out in dividends, then you'd expect only half it to grow at half that rate or 5%. So the return on equity times the profit retention rate gives you what you think is the growth, what you expect to be the growth factor of the company. 
Now, how do we then use that to calculate how much a common stock is worth? The book we'll talk about that is value, the value. I think it's simply sufficient to say it's the price. The value ought to be the price. So the price is the dividend in the next period. So not the dividend that was just paid, but the next dividend divided by your required rate of return minus the growth rate, the growth factor. Okay, that's it. Now, the math that gets you to there is a little more complicated, but we can just stick with this formula as the end result. It looks a lot like the perpetuity, except instead of required rate of return, we have required rate of return minus the growth rate. Okay, and the growth rate, growth factor we calculated up above. All right, so that was a bit. We will talk more about this in the next segment, and I'll show some examples of how to work this in another segment as well using Excel.